Hi everyone, I'm Tegan and this is Westlore. Today we're going to talk about if I only had two lenses for a project, for a film, um, what two lenses do I absolutely need? And I wish that I had um, seen this video when I started off buying lenses because lenses can be really fun to try out and really get into and you can get really deep into all sorts of different lenses. They can be kind of cheap um, or they can be really expensive. So I wish that I had kind of known what the two favorites are that I always go to. And now that I've been watching a lot of feature films with those two lenses in mind, I actually see them being used a lot by filmmakers. So the two lenses that I really recommend more than anything else, if you have the budget for only two lenses, um, it's the 85 millimeter lens and the 35 millimeter lens. And so um, these are obviously the more expensive cine lenses. Um, you know, you could go with like just an EF mount uh, for a still photography lens or an M42 mount. Um, that's fine as well. I mean, this is really helpful for pulling focus, but when you're on a tight budget, um, it doesn't really matter. If you, if you just stick with the 85 and the 35 millimeter, you're going to be in really good business. And I'll tell you why. So first off, it covers both ends of the spectrum. So you've got kind of the telephoto lens with the 85 millimeter, and then you've got a, a wider lens with the 35 millimeter. Now you can go a little bit wider. Um, people like, um, some of the, some of the big filmmakers like Scorsese and, um, Spielberg will go like 28 millimeter. I wouldn't go wider than that. So you can get really wide, like 21 millimeter, 18 millimeter. Um, but if you're only sticking to two lenses, the widest I would go is 28. Um, up to 35 millimeter. The reason for that is a lot of indoor scenes, for example, you want to see enough of the location, but you don't want to see too much. The more that you see indoors, for example, means that the, the DP, whoever's lighting it, has to make sure that even more is covered in it. It actually, if, you, if you're filming indoors and you're using something like a 21 millimeter lens, a lot of times that actually presents too much location and it becomes a hassle. It takes time and energy to light everything that you're seeing. And I feel like it just doesn't look great um, capturing the actors when it's a little too wide. It's okay for, I think, outdoor shots, um, especially scenes where you really want to capture either the location uh, in its entirety or, um, you know, those few times that you do want to get kind of close and personal, having a really wide angle lens can be nice, but the 28 to 35 millimeter, somewhere in that range, does a great job of feeling intimate um, with the actors when you put the camera close to the actors, um, and that millimeter of lens, um, but it doesn't feel too close. It doesn't, it doesn't have, it doesn't warp the face at all. It doesn't, it doesn't do anything unpleasing to the eye. Um, so from a wide perspective, many of the shots, a lot of times when I want to be intimate with uh, two actors, I'll use the 35 millimeter lens and I can put that camera really close and, and we feel as an audience as if we're right there. The second lens, the more telephoto lens, the 85 millimeter, this is called the beauty lens and for good reason. It just does such a great job of separating the actor from the background putting just enough out of focus, um, really does a great job of just capturing the best um, look and feel of the face without distortion. And, you know, it's kind of interesting, but there's a lot of directors who actually use, I think, the 85 millimeter lens as a crutch because it looks so good. One uh, notable director um, who uses, from what I can tell, almost exclusively 85 millimeter lenses is Chris Nolan. Um, I think he uses it too much because he doesn't establish um, shots where you feel intimate with, uh, with the actors so much, but all of his shots look fantastic. And a big reason for that is because he's just using the 85 millimeter lens. So these two lenses by far, um, just a fantastic combo. And 
You know, when I first started making films, I thought uh, I would want a 50 millimeter lens because you frequently hear that the 50 millimeter lens is exactly what the human eye sees. And I thought, well, that's kind of nice. Like I know a lot of um, famous photographers, still photographers use the 50 millimeter lens. It's their favorite lens. For filmmaking, I have to say the 50 millimeter lens is now my least favorite lens because it's just kind of an in-between um, uh, look and feel. It doesn't capture enough, but it's not zoomed in enough to really create any sort of interesting depth. Um, once in a blue moon, I'll use it, but um, by far, these two lenses are the best. Um, I do have a 135 lens, and I have a 21 millimeter lens. Occasionally, I'll use that if, um, if for example, I really want to emphasize a long shot or a wide shot and I want to emphasize the distance between the camera or the, how the audience is seeing the scene or that shot and, um, and really emphasize that long shot, really emphasize that distance, I'll use the 135. The 135 is a fantastic lens for, for that particular shot. Same thing with outside. Um, the 21 millimeter lens can really emphasize the entire location. Uh, it can really come in close and nice to really emphasize uh, if I want to put the camera real close to an actor. I mean like kind of this distance and I want to just put the audience right there with the characters who are talking. The 21 millimeter lens can um, can really come in handy. But again, that's mainly outdoors that that works. Um, indoors, it becomes a little bit more tricky to use a wide angle lens. Keep in mind too, when I say 85 millimeter, when I say 35 millimeter, your lens is gonna change perspective depending on the chip size of your camera. So the smaller your chip size is, the more it's gonna punch in on your shot, which is kind of a weird thing, but if you're using a micro four thirds chip, for example, your 35 millimeter lens is actually gonna look closer to a 50 millimeter or even a 65 millimeter lens. That's something important to keep in mind. I'm using um, a super 35 millimeter size chip. So um, when I talk about these two uh, millimeter lenses, that's my reference. If you're using, let's say a DSLR, a lot of DSLRs actually have a chip size that's much larger than uh, a super 35 millimeter lens. In that case, your 35 millimeter lens is actually gonna look wider. It's gonna look more like a, a 28 millimeter lens and your 85 is gonna look a little bit wider. So it's gonna look more like a 65, maybe a 55 millimeter lens. So I would do your research before you buy a lens, certainly to see kind of how it changes the focal length of your lenses. Um, and more importantly, if I could go back in time, I would just rent a lens kit, um, you know, from ShareGrid or something and just play around with it for a day with actors or with friends just to see kind of what your favorite um, quality is. But again, I would say 40 or 50% of the time I'm using 35, 40 or 50% I'm using 85 and five to 10% I'm using a couple specialized lenses. You can find some good deals on lenses on eBay. Um, for example, an M42 mount lens is an old school mount. It's from, I believe, the 60s or 70s. Um, you can find lenses for like uh, 40 bucks, 100 bucks, somewhere in that range. And you can get a really cheap $5 adapter that goes from the M42 uh, thread on the back of the lens to an EF thread, for example, and, and use it for any EF mount. So that's a good way to go. I highly suggest using prime lenses because you're just gonna get a much more beautiful image with the prime lens than you would uh, a zoom lens if you can go that route. Um, and it's a good way to focus on just sticking to the type of lens that you envisioned. And it, it forces you sometimes when you don't have a zoom lens to move the camera into position to get the exact framing right. It's a little bit more painstaking process to do that, but I think the uh, overall process helps you get a better image when you focus on um, 
just using the lens that you intended to use. So you might be wondering too, well, if I have a 28 millimeter lens um, or a 35 millimeter lens, for example, um, can I still get that depth of field? You do want to check the f-stop or the t-stop. So something like this actually has a t-stop of 2.1, meaning you can still um, get kind of razor thin, um, you know, in focus uh, shots um, and have everything else out of focus. So um, even the wide angle lenses, um, even the 21 millimeter lens that I have, if I put it at, at t-stop 2.1, it's still enough to get a lot out of focus. Um, one short film that I just shot in Oregon not too long ago, um, we shot a lot of stuff outside with the 21 millimeter lens, and I actually wanted to see a little bit more in focus. Um, so I, I put the f-stop to around 5.6 or so, because what's the point of shooting at this beautiful location if everything is super out of focus in the background and you can't see how amazing that background is. So a lot of times too, you, you actually do want to keep things a little bit more in focus for certain reasons other than just making everything look super uh, shallow depth of field. It's also good to use these two different lenses that are kind of on opposite ends of the spectrum because it allows you to create contrast in your shots. You want to differentiate your shots as much as you can, um, and not just in the distance that you create, not just in the framing that you create. So it is nice to have, let's say, a long shot and a medium shot uh, back to back so that you kind of make things different um, and always change things up for the audience. But the, the millimeter itself actually helps to differentiate your shots from one another. So it's, it's kind of nice to go from a wide to an 85 and from an 85 back to you know a wide as uh, again that way you can create that contrast the audience won't necessarily know in fact very few people will I think only a handful of cinematographers and other filmmakers who are really experienced with lenses could tell the difference but the general feeling for your audience is going to be oh something's different and I like it and they're not going to know why so that's why it's also good to have those two different lenses. If I only had one lens to use, I would probably go wide. I'd probably go the 35 millimeter. Not that I ever would only shoot an entire film with one lens, but I think it's my favorite by far. And um, it just creates that perfect sense of being there with the audience. Again, going back to Chris Nolan and his films, I, I really like his films a lot. Um, I do think that you you lose a little bit of the intimacy when you're shooting only kind of, you know, telephoto lenses. And something that Spielberg loves to do a lot, which is why I love his film so much, is he, he uses a lot of those wide shots, wide angle shots, to emphasize the idea that we're there with the characters, we're sitting there with them. So you'll notice one of the things that Spielberg does frequently is he'll shoot long shots with a telephoto lens and he'll shoot close-ups with the wide. That's actually opposite of how a lot of filmmakers are taught or think about framing. So a lot of times a filmmaker will think, well, if I'm going to get a long shot, I'm going to get this establishing shot of, you know, uh, the house and the garage. I'll use a wide angle lens so I can capture it all. Spielberg does the opposite. He says, let's take the camera further back and let's actually use a telephoto lens because the feeling to the audience is, is that they're far away. So he not only makes you feel far away because the camera's far away, but he also makes you feel far away with the telephoto effect. And the same thing goes with a close-up. A lot of times people think, well, I'm gonna use a 85 millimeter lens for close-up because the 85 millimeter lens is gonna punch in super close. Spielberg does the opposite. He says, I want to put that camera as close as possible to the actor's face as I can because the close-up should feel like you're intimate. It, the, the purpose of the, the millimeter of the lens, the focal length of the lens, is to make you feel like you're there with them. And what better way to do that than with a close-up shot? You maybe have seen this in movies before, but they'll use like a 135 millimeter lens for a close-up shot 
And even though we're close up on the actor's face, we still somehow have that feeling that we're kind of far away. And that the, the reason for that is because the telephoto lens was used and an extreme telephoto lens was used. And, you know, sometimes that's the right call, I think. Sometimes you do want to make the audience feel like they're, they're looking at someone at a distance rather than making them feel like they're there with the person. I would argue though that most of the time it makes more sense to do closer shots, medium, medium close up, close up shots, um, with the idea that you're going to give the audience the feeling that they're there with, with that actor, they're in the scene with the person. And the same thing goes for, you know, the long shot or the wide shot. Um, to me, it makes a lot more sense to use a telephoto lens for those shots um, to create that feeling, to emphasize the feeling that the audience is looking from the outside. So more of an objective point of view for your long and wide shots and more of a subjective point of view for your closer shots. I hope that this makes a lot of sense to you. I hope that uh, I've saved you a lot of money by not jumping in and buying lenses right away because it can get quite costly. If you have any questions or thoughts on this, please leave them in the comments section below and have a good one.